Let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Anthony Miller. I'm an MD physician and epidemiologist, currently Professor Emeritus at the Dalai Lama School of Public Health at the University of Toronto. I've advised the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research on Cancer for several decades. I founded and served for 15 years as Director of the Epidemiology Unit of the National Cancer Institute of Canada. I've served as Senior Epidemiologist in the International Agency for Research on Cancer and Head of the Division of Cancer Epidemiology, German Cancer Research Centre, Heidelberg. I've served as a consultant to the US National Cancer Institute and the World Health, Health Organization, and I'm a fellow of both the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada and the Royal College of Physicians of the United Kingdom. I'm a senior medical advisor to Environmental Health Trust. I believe we have a responsibility to future generations. When I review the research, I conclude that the weight of evidence is that radiofrequency radiation is a human carcinogen. And this is based on human studies in Sweden, France, and the International Multicenter Interphone Study, which all show that prolonged exposure to cell phones more than doubles the risk of brain cancers. The National Toxicology Program Animal Study was designed to test the basis for our government limits, asking the question, could non-thermal levels of radiofrequency radiation be harmful? This $25 million study is the largest and most well-designed animal study ever done, which ensured that the animals were not exposed to radiation levels that induce thermal changes in tissue. The findings were that two types of cancers occurred in excess. The very same types of cancers found in excess in the epidemiology studies of long-term cell phone users. Another critical finding, they found DNA damage in the brain of some of the exposed groups. And there are also supporting studies showing the adverse effects of radiofrequency radiation on numerous biomarkers of cellular damage. The combination of all this evidence does not just inform us about risks exposed by risk posed by cell phones, but also to all exposures to radiofrequency radiation, including from cell towers. It is all the same type of radiation. Statements that non-ionizing non -ionizing radiation, such as radiofrequency radiation, cannot cause harm at low levels are simply false. Statements that there are no established health effects at levels below the Federal Communications Commission limits are misleading. These limits do not equate with safety. Safety is not assured when FCC limits are met. These limits were set by groups with strong industry connections made up of engineers and physicists, not medical professionals, public health experts, and not toxicologists. I'm one of over 236 scientists who have published on this issue and who are calling for more protective limits to radiofrequency radiation exposure. This is not just about cancer. Peer-reviewed scientific research has also found headaches, damage to brain development and damage to reproductive systems follow from this exposure. Therefore, my opinion is that the weight of evidence supports the classification of radiofrequency radiation as a human carcinogen implying hazard of, of, at all levels of exposure, so that we must reduce exposure as much as possible, especially to children. Cell towers should be kept as far away from children and places like schools as far as possible. Thank you for your attention.